Hey there, dog lovers. Welcome back to the channel where we provide you with the best tips and tricks to keep your furry friends happy and healthy. Today, we're going to talk about lumbar IVDD in dogs and how to take care of them at home. So once again, I'm Adam. This is Bo. Let's dive in. Firstly, let's understand what lumbar IVDD is. Lumbar intervertebral disc disease, or IVDD, is a common condition in dogs that occurs when the cartilage, aka the discs, between the vertebrae and the spine become degenerative. In some cases, you can get a bulge or a herniated disc that can lead to future degenerative changes down the line. However, in these cases, they potentially cause pressure on the spinal cord and they can lead to pain, difficulty in walking, and even, in some cases, slight paralysis. In today's video, however, we're going to specifically discuss more chronic degenerative changes to the disc, which can be diagnosed through x-ray. But if you don't have access to x-ray and you're wondering if this is the case with your dog, I want you to check out the video up above where I discuss what top line is and how that may look if your dog has IVDD. Now, the question is, how can we take care of our furry friends at home if they have lumbar IVDD? Well, I'll discuss that with a few general tips and one specific therapy that you can do, which I find very helpful for this condition. First off, know that this can cause acute flare-ups when it's aggravated. So in these cases, when there is a flare-up, you can use medication. So you can go to your vet and they can prescribe things like anti-inflammatories. Rest is the second thing you can do, which is essential to restrict your dog's movement. You want to allow them to you know, do their normal activities. However, you don't want to motivate them to do more so that they could potentially prolong the suffering, pain, and discomfort uh, and delay the healing. Uh, another factor in your household is change the environment a little bit. So make sure your dog's environment is safe in the house. Make sure it's uh, nice and comfortable. Place non-slip mats and rugs on slippery surfaces and around the corners. And also avoid the stairs if possible. Another thing to take note of is the hair between the pads in your dog's paws. Make sure that is trimmed if you have a longer haired dog so it doesn't overlap where the pads are because this can basically make or mimic ice and when your dog is on slippery floors like vinyl or tile, they can slide out really easy and re-aggravate the condition. A healthy diet is also essential to be fed to your dog just to improve its overall well-being and health, uh, to help with healing, but also it's going to reduce some of the inflammation in their body, which is important so it doesn't delay the healing. Lastly, one thing that you can do is rehabilitation. So rehab therapy, physiotherapy, or even hydrotherapy are great to build up muscles that support and protect the spine. Another thing that you can do if you don't have access to that is you can release the psoas muscle in the low back and it attaches to the hip. This creates a lot of tension and compression in the low back. I'll link to a video again up here where I show you how to do that at home. Uh, and that is a great way to decompress your dog's low back. Now, finally, the thing that I like doing that is really simple to do with your dog at home is doing a little bit of passive extension through their low back. What this means is you're going to apply a force to your dog's spine. It's going to be very light. It's just help. It's helping to mobilize the low back and to create a little bit of segmental extension between the vertebrae. Ideally, you want to do this when your dog is not in pain. If you're applying pressure and the dog yelps or they're trying to get away, then you know you're applying too much pressure and you should definitely stop and seek out help from a medical professional or a vet. Now, when you do this, what you want to do is you want to take your index finger and your thumb, bend your index finger, put your thumb together, make a V between the inside of your index finger and your thumb. The spinous process, which is the bony part on your dog's spine, is going to sit right in between there. So when the dog is lying down, you're going to put the index and thumb over the bony part of the spine and you're going to apply a little bit of pressure. As you do that, you're going to move down the spine and you're going to apply a little bit on each segment. This is just going to help to mobilize the spine and take a little bit of pressure off their back. If you have a small dog, it's not going to need a lot of pressure to be applied here. You just see slight movement in the dog's spine, but if you're moving the dog's body, you're putting way too much pressure. Another thing you can do is do it when the dog is non-weight bearing, therefore they're lying down. If they're resting with you on the couch or you go onto the floor with them in the evening, 
put a little bit of pressure on their back and you can really feel that segmental extension happen. If you are doing it standing up, then I suggest you scoop underneath the abdomen support and you're gonna apply a little bit of that pressure as well. So taking care of a dog with lumbar IVDD can be challenging, but with the proper care and attention by the dog owner, the dog can live a happy and healthy life and we can prevent that from getting worse. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to have access to more informative videos just like this one.